Hi everybody, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and these are your horoscopes for the month of April 2019. So this is your sun and rising sign horoscope for Capricorn. Uh, I'm going to take a look at your chart in terms of uh, the major themes of the month. Usually I would go through individual transits using my software and show you each one, but they're all sort of glommed together and um, jammed up, and I think it would actually confuse people more than anything, so I'm going to keep it a little simpler this month. Um, on April 5th, at the very beginning of the month, the new moon falls in your fourth house of home, family, roots, foundations, parents, etc. Now, this means that there is a new cycle of activity beginning relative to home and family. It's initiation of something new. Now, um, this cycle, because it is uh, rooted in the planet Mars, being an Aries new moon, and Mars being active in your sixth house, having really just entered your sixth house at the start of the month, the cycle ahead has to do with uh, misfortune, challenges, setbacks, struggles, health problems, etc. within the home or family. I know that sounds rough, um, but there are a few other possibilities as well. Main reason that we see this is that the action of Mars in the sixth house is in a house that is traditionally a house of strife. These setbacks don't kill a person. They make you stronger if you work through them. Um, but the, it is a month of newness that is being, that is happening through different kinds of challenges that you face. Um, in particular, for example, uh, sometimes you'll notice that the sixth house will bring up a phase of very hard work, sometimes even like home improvement and hiring people to do work in your home. It doesn't necessarily have to be strife in the sense of um, personal pain or anguish or accidents or, you know, big setbacks that really, you know, screw you up. It can just be like, I have to get a plumber, you know, <laughs> like, shoot, I have to spend some money and get a plumber. The, the Mars in the sixth house, though, implies that something is going to need fixing or working on, or there's a hard period of labor coming up. It can also imply service of some kind, giving your blood, sweat, and tears to something, so to speak. But that's where the action is heading. Now, um, th this cycle is there's also potential for healing in the home and family to work through something in the home and family uh, and to restore some something. Um, to, to face or deal with something. Um, we see this because between the 19th and 23rd of April, we have a full moon in Libra landing in your 10th house of career, home, family, etc. And we also see, um, excuse me, 10th house is, is a house of career, public reputation, work, action in the world, etc. I think I lumped it back together with the fourth house. But you can see the full moon up there is calling for balance in the sign of Libra and peace and diplomacy, right? And it's, it's bringing balance to um, what otherwise might look like a month that features a more kind of uh, edgy Mars-like feeling around home, family, and then this kind of Mars in the sixth house feature. So there's balance that's happening around the 19th. Then at the same time, between the 19th to 23rd, Mercury and Venus will go through conjunctions to Chiron in the fourth house of home and family, it bringing up wounds and the potential for healing and learning and growth around those foundational matters. What supports me? Um, where do I live? Who who are my you know my my how are my parents? My relationship to family karma, that kind of stuff is going to be uh, more a bit more of a challenge or struggle this month. But you see the potential for you know, healing and growth to come there. And the full moon in Libra offers some kind of balancing point as well with an emphasis on peace and harmony. Of course, it brings also brings an emphasis around the 19th into your career house. So maybe also this month has something to do with balancing domestic matters and professional matters or private and public issues. Um, so, you know, that's the, the basic issue of the month. That's going to be really personal for you because the full moon, for example, will square from the 10th house on the 19th, will square Saturn and Pluto in the first house. Your ruling planet is getting into a conjunction with the south node right now. That's heavy. That's, that's an intense moment for the south node, uh, for, for Saturn, excuse me. Um, that typically would mean a period of greater constriction, consolidation, contraction. Uh, it's a bit more serious and it, it feels heavier. 
so this is a, a big personal moment for you, maybe a bit of a crossroads and important decisions to be made. Maybe again, really looking for that balance between what you're doing in the world and your actions in the world and how you're seen publicly and things happening at home or in the private sphere of life. There is, again, an emphasis on a, a seed. There's a seed being planted in the house of home and family, and it's coming along with Mars in the house of, of strife, hard work, difficulty, repair, etc. So um, some work to be done around those things this month, and it may feel a little personally contractive, but getting through it, um, it, it you know, getting, getting through this period um, is very important because uh, you're setting yourself up piece by piece, month by month at this point for a major transformation for Capricorn, Capricorn Sun, Capricorn Rising next winter. When, when Saturn conjoins Pluto next January and February of 2020, every, all these little monthly forecasts, all the work you've been doing month by month is going to be building into a moment of profound catharsis and transformations for Capricorns. So you're working towards something. It's a pretty big deal. Probably it's going to involve home and family. We can see this because Chiron has just entered your fourth house of home and family to stay for quite some time. Um, And so how could it not, you know, how could this not be involved with your roots on some level? All right, so that's the moon cycle for the month. Now, the other thing that's happening that's really interesting is Venus and Mercury are also getting involved with a conjunction to Neptune and then squares to Jupiter between your third and twelfth house. This is happening in the first half of the month. Mercury conjoins Neptune around the 2nd of April. Venus conjoins Neptune by the 10th. Mercury squares Jupiter by the 12th. Venus squares Jupiter by the 15th. So first half of the month is a whole lot of you know, Neptune and a whole lot of Jupiter and Venus and Mercury getting involved with them. So what does that mean overall? Well, the third house had to do with the things in life that guided our actions in terms of domestic responsibilities, like siblings, neighbors, kin, brethren, things that we were attached to by sort of local bonds of loyalty and the expectations around family, city, neighborhood that we had for one another, the ways that we were bound together in that way. <clears throat> now, with a lot of planets moving into conjunction with Neptune, there may be some pretty interesting things happening with your neighbors, or you could see crazy neighbors, or you, you know, like, or you could see things happening with your siblings or people that you're bound to in some immediate sense, some more familial sense almost, um, that are challenging or, or difficult. Um, however, with squares to Jupiter in the 12th house, um, you know, something beneficial may come out of this, some kind of inspiration or greater faith or deeper understanding or compassion, uh, charity, um, giving, sacrificing. Uh, you know, I think that it's, it has a potential to be very benevolent. At the same time, I would wonder about giving too much or being asked to give too much to something and losing yourself a little bit. Um, or I would wonder about becoming a martyr or becoming, you know, trying to save someone or also trying to get people to do something for you. Like don't use some kind of, don't emotionally manipulate other people to do something for you because of the bond that they share with you. Like asking a, a sibling for money when you, it's for something that's really self-serving and you you pretend like it's more of a dire need than it is. I'm not saying any of you would do that, but just, be careful of that, the, the way that emotions can manipulate others this month, or you could be in it, manipulated by them. But also you're looking for the way in which the community around you and the th- things around you in your immediate environment are trying to provide you with something uplifting during a time that frankly might be a little difficult this month. So don't be surprised if there's some good Samaritans or neighbors that kind of pop by to help you. All right, so that's what I've got for you overall. I hope that this was very interesting and um, that it leaves you with some good things to think about. Uh, There's only, actually, there's one more thing, which is between the 20th and 23rd, the sun will also enter Taurus and then get into a conjunction with Uranus in your fifth house. I'll highlight that for you so you can see it. I almost forgot. That conjunction has the power to be very illuminating and auspicious. It can be a little bit disruptive. Uranus is like that, but very overall, very um, paradigm shifting or illuminating and inspiring. And in the fifth house, which is traditionally the house of good fortune, this is something that may be here to help you take a big step and provide you with some kind of solution 
uh, to whatever challenges or struggles you might be working with. Just remember that with a lot of, you know, with this Aries energy uh, this month, the sun is going to square Saturn and Pluto in your first house after the new moon. Um, that, that between like the 10th and 15th of the month, uh, you want to be really careful about the, the balance between being too rigid or principled and too loosey-goosey or completely boundaryless. That tension, I think, could also be a little pr- pronounced this month. All right, so that's what I've got for you, Capricorns. I hope you have a great month. Let me know your, you know, tell me what happens. Leave me your stories on the feed, and I look forward to talking to you again in May. Okay, take care. Bye.